<laughs> so, um, and this one, guys, again, the same idea is going on, same thing that we're covering. You see tangent of 7 pi over 12, and again, I'm going to tell you, hey, use half angle identities. Okay, let's use the half angle identities. So the tangent formula in this case is going to be 1 minus cosine of u over sine of u. But again, guys, we're looking for u where this represents u divided by 2, right? So tangent of 7, what did I say, 7 pi over 12? So that's u over 2, right? So again, just take u over 2 equals 7 pi over 12. Hopefully I don't need to show this step by step. You guys know that that's 7 pi over 6, right? OK, fortunately for tangent, we don't need to worry about the plus or minus. All we got to do is figure out what u is and then plug it in. So in this case, we're left with 1 minus the cosine of 7 pi over 6 divided by the sine of 7 pi over 6. Well, we think about 7 pi over 6, and we say that's the same as a reference angle of pi over 6, but it's in the third quadrant. So therefore, sine and cosine are both negative, right? Are you guys following me on the sine, where that is, yeah. the third quadrant? Negative. So it's 1 minus negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. Ooh, geez, fraction, fractions are no fun. Fractions, fractions hurt someone. So what can we do to get rid of them? Well, thank you, Mr. McLogan, for doing warm-ups for the last three class periods dealing with complex fractions so we get practice wow. with this. Because we simply can just multiply by 2 on the top and bottom, and we can take care of these fractions. We can cure this ailment. And when we do that, we get 2 plus the square root of 3 divided by a negative 1. So could I multiply by negative 2? Sure. Could I multiply by 2? Sure. We just got to divide this into both of them, so it would be negative 2 minus square root of 3. If you would have multiplied by negative 2, you would have got the same answer. OK? All right, 